The Bobcat Outsider is brought to you by Adventures of Shane and Laura. Come join the fun as we explore Montana, the national parks, and beyond. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Bobcat Outsider, the show that brings you Bobcat football from a fan perspective. I'm your host, Shane Driscoll. Last week, the Bobcats absolutely rolled the Northern Colorado Bears. Next week, the Cats travel to Davis to take on the Aggies. We have both of those games and the bigger picture in this week's episode of the Bobcat Outsider. First up, the rewind. Last week I talked about how this was going to be an uphill battle for the Bears no matter how you slice it. The Cats being the number one rushing offense and the Bears being one of the bottom, if not the bottom, rushing defense. Well, that proved to be true and the Cats did whatever they wanted on the ground, heaping up an enormous 451 yards rushing the third most in Montana State history. The Bobcats go on to dominate this football game 45 to 14, and it's an important note that the Bobcats defense allowed only one touchdown in this football game, the other touchdown coming on a pick six. That combined with the fact that six of the points scored in the 16 points that North Dakota scored in that football game came on a special teams play means that the Bobcats have allowed only 24 points when they've been on defense over the course of the last three football games really quite remarkable. Once again, in this football game, Lane Sumner shows that he is a great running back with some big plays and some smash mouth running. I loved the way that Troy Anderson distributed the ball this time, taking advantage of the way the defense is key off of him. And eventually that dis distribution of the ball paid off, allowing him an open lane on the inside for a couple of nice plays, one being a touchdown. He dang near spun Willie Patterson out of his shoes when he decided to pull it as the middle opened up for him. I wanna give JoJo Henderson some big props on that fumble recovery, on the special teams play, the punt return, where the Cats lost the football in the sun and mishandled the return. It's funny, but somehow Troy Anderson's three sacks in two games doesn't seem like that big of a deal. If it were anybody else save maybe Bryce Sterk, we'd be raving about this, but it's kind of just another day at the office for Troy Anderson. I love seeing Callahan O'Reilly house that fake punt and to see Jason Scrimpos catching that jump pass from Troy Anderson. I love seeing those defensive guys getting in on it every once in a while and being able to actually score a touchdown. At five foot nine, 177 pounds, you better wrap up if you're gonna try to tackle Coy Steele or he's gonna make you look dumb. And how about Derek Snell? Rovick's pass gets tipped at the line and Derek Snell has the wherewithal to make the diving catch in the end zone for a touchdown. I love the way that that guy's exploding onto the scene. It's easy to look at this game and say, well, here's another overmatched team that the Bobcats were able to just kind of exploit and run up the score on. I 100% disagree. Northern Colorado is on a two game win streak, although one of those games was Idaho State who is right now really struggling. But when Idaho had to go down to Greeley, a reasonably good Big Sky team, they got beat in Greeley. So I'm not saying that the Bobcats should have just not gotten beaten, but the fact that they won by such a wide margin and did whatever they wanted on the ground tells you a little bit about this rushing attack and this team in general. I do say that with a bit of a caveat, this was a really bad matchup for the Bears and it was a very good matchup for the Bobcats. That being said, you just can't take a road win in the Big Sky Conference for granted. With that win, the Bobcats moved to seven and two overall, four and two in conference. And Bryce Sterk is recognized by being added to the Buck Buchanan Defensive Player of the Year watch list. The Buck Buchanan Defensive Player of the Year is a national award that goes to the best FCS defensive player. His 1.1 sacks per game has him tied at number four in the country. And your Montana State Fighting Bobcats move back into the top 10 of the Stats FCS Top 25 poll. And now on to the scouting report. Next week, the Bobcats travel to Davis, California to take on the Aggies. The Aggies play in what used to be called Aggie Stadium, but the beginning of this year, it was changed to the UC Davis Health Stadium. It seats over 10,000 fans and is another football field that is ringed by a track. Montana State leads the series with five wins to one, the last coming in 2016, the first year of Jeff Choate's tenure. An interesting connection. The last time the Bobcats faced Dan Hawkins, they defeated him and the wait for it, 
Pac-12 Colorado Buffaloes in one of the biggest upsets of Bobcat history. Hawkins also laid the foundation for success for coaches Peterson and Choate at Boise State, where they pulled off one of the best five-year runs in college football history. The Aggies were originally picked to be second in the conference, that's second only to Eastern Washington, the national runners-up last year. Both teams now find themselves on the outside looking in. The Aggies have a 500 record this year, both in conference and out of conference. But don't let that fool you. Their losses are to North Dakota State, University of Montana and Weber, three of the top five teams in the country, FBS Cal, and North Dakota in Grand Forks, where the Fighting Hawks have beaten three ranked teams, including the Bobcats. I think this football game may be the best test for both UC Davis and Montana State so far this year. And now time for some key matchups. I think a major key to this football game is going to be how Montana State's pass rush can match up against the offensive line and Jake Mayer for the UC Davis Aggies. The Cats are going to get their yards against this football team. But the question is, can the Bobcats limit Davis in their offensive strength, the passing game? And now time for some players to know. The Aggies are led by number 15, that's senior quarterback Jake Mayer. And by the way, that is the correct pronunciation. Don't let the Montana Mint podcast confuse you. Mayer is yet another in a long line of fifth year senior quarterbacks that the Cats seem to continue to run into. Mayer was selected as a preseason All-American by four different media outlets. He's coming off a big season last year, winning the Hero Sports All-American Award, as well as being named to the Peyton Award watch list for the second season in a row. The Peyton Peyton Award goes to the best offensive player over the course of the whole year in the whole FCS. He also earned Big Sky First Team Quarterback honors as well as Offensive Player of the Year. On the ground, keep an eye out for number 34, Yulonzo Gilliam Jr. The 5'9 redshirt sophomore out of Merced High School earned National Offensive Player of the Week honors this week from College Sports Madness for his 242 rushing yards and two touchdown performance against Portland State. He currently leads the conference with 105 and a half rushing yards per game. Number 53, Nick Eaton, is coming off a second Big Sky Defensive Player of the Week award this week as he registered eight tackles, including two sacks. The six foot two redshirt freshman earned previous Defensive Player of the Week honors against Cal Poly. And now some keys to the game. As always, rushing is going to be a key to the game for the Bobcats, and this is no exception. The Aggies are not a team that you can go in and just shake everything up and just hope that your new strategy works against them. The Bobcats have to do what they know that they do best and push them around a little on the ground. Now the Bobcats should try to open up the running lanes by throwing some high percentage passes here and there or just loosening up the edge a little bit with some outside run game like they did against Northern Colorado. The way that they used Troy Anderson as a decoy, allowing him to give the ball away more often against Northern Colorado worked really well and I think that it's a very smart strategy really against any football team. On the other side of the football, Davis needs to make their money through the air. The game kicks off at 5 p.m. on Saturday and will be broadcast by SWX. That's carried by ABC in Western Montana and the SWX channel in Billings. You should be able to stream this game on Pluto.tv or the Pluto app. Now it's time for a quick look across the divide. The Grizz protect the Little Brown Stein as they come back from a 10 point deficit against the Vandals, beating them 42 to 17. They move up to number five in the Stats FCS Top 25 poll. The Cats and Grizz find themselves on a top 10 collision course as the Brawl of the Wild looms just two weeks away. The Grizz welcome in number three, Weber State next week. That game kicks off at one o'clock on Saturday and can be seen on Roos Sports. That means it will not be streamed by Pluto. Now time for an outsider's eye view, a broader context of the Big Sky Conference and the FCS in general. Idaho State continues to flounder losing 48 to five to Eastern Washington this weekend. Weber State and Sac State escape their games by the skin of their teeth. Weber beating North Dakota by three points and Sac beating Northern Arizona by four points in a late comeback. And for the third week in a row, wouldn't you know it, the team that the Bobcats are going to play seems to surge as Davis dominates Portland State, 45 to 28. Elsewhere in the FCS, some big upsets as number seven, Central Arkansas is shut out by Southeast Louisiana, 34 to zero. Yikes. And number 14, North Carolina A&T loses to one win Morgan State. And number 11, Illinois State, notches a convincing upset, beating number four, South Dakota State, 27 to 18. An important note, with the Bobcats sitting at seven and three at that number 10 spot, knocking on the door of a top eight seed, the Bobcats find themselves behind five other teams with the same record. That seed might not be so far out of reach as I thought it was two weeks ago. 
And now time for Outsider Opinions, where I give you my opinion about something random, whether you like it or not. And this week I wanna talk about taking the good with the bad. So when we have a coach who say is really good at scheming up a good offense or defense, for his players, but he just doesn't recruit the level of player to execute at a, a high level to keep the team at, at an extremely elite level. Sometimes that can be frustrating. Or, or if you get a coach who just recruits better than anyone in the country, but they just can't scheme things up maybe in one phase or another well enough to keep those players optimizing their potential, well then you can kind of sit back and say, man, we're, we have such a good football team, we have so many athletes, if we just had a coach that could get them to play at the level we want them to play at. But guess what? You get that coach and you're not gonna get those athletes. So that's the difficulty. We just have to recognize every single person, every person has their strengths and their weaknesses. And you're going to have a coach who's good at something and maybe not quite as good as other coaches at another thing. But here's the thing. In the end, if the coach wins a lot of football games, that's a good football coach. And you can only judge a coach's performance by their record. You can trade the schemer for the recruiter, but you're just trading one problem for another. If a coach is able to achieve wins and run a clean program, you kind of have to run with them and accept the fact that they have limitations, just like you or I. I'd like to know what your opinion is about my outsider opinions take this week. Do you think that you have to settle for a coach who has some sort of limitation? Or do you think that there's a coach out there that you have to go and, and, and keep them on the coaching carousel until you find the guy who can recruit at an elite level and get the guys to execute at an elite level? Let me know in the comments below. I just want to give a quick shout out to the RNR Catcast. If you like media that comes from a fan perspective, you're going to love the RNR Catcast. They set a conversational tone that makes it feel like you're just talking about the cats over a couple beers with some friends. Do you have an organization, product, or event that you'd like to feature in the Bobcat Outsider? Send me an email. I'll leave my email address in the description below. Thanks for watching, everyone. Be sure to follow me on Twitter at Shane Driscoll. Also, you can always find the most knowledgeable, best researched, and most thorough Bobcat and Big Sky Conference news on Skyline Sports. That's SkylineSportsMT.com. As always, the Bobcat Outsiders brought to you by Adventures of Shane and Laura. If you love Montana and the national parks, check out the YouTube channel that chronicles our adventures around Montana and beyond. If you like the video, be sure to leave it a like. If you want to see more, click subscribe. We'll catch you next time. And until then, go Cats!